Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of Prehistory in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse, and before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons and our channel members from our sister channel over at History in the Dark. You are the reason why this content remains just a theoretical. And today, we're going to discuss the Spinosaurus. One of the most well-known large carnivores in recent memory, right next to Giganotosaurus and Tyrannosaurus, this dinosaur was, um, well, really confusing, actually. There is still so much we just don't know about dinosaurs in general, but Spinosaurus in particular has been through a lot of changes over the years. A just disgusting amount of changes. We really don't know what this thing was exactly, and many paleontologists have entirely different outlooks regarding its behavior, its habitat, and everything in between. And there's actually a few reasons for that. So this is the story of the many faces of Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus is actually a genus of Spinosaur dinosaur that lived in what is now North Africa during the Sanamonian to Upper Turonian stages of the Late Cretaceous period. That would be between 99 to 93.5 million years ago. The genus was actually first discovered in 1912 and described by German paleontologist Ernst Stromer in 1915. There are other species underneath Spinosaurus that might be different than the regular one, but it's hard to say. The one everyone knows is Spinosaurus aegypticus, but there's also the possibility that there's a different species called Spinosaurus maracanus, and there's also Sigilmasasaurus brevicolis that may be a Spinosaurus, and there's also Oxalia columbensis, which again might be actually part of the Spinosaurus genus, Paleontologists still aren't sure. But for the sake of clarity and our own sanity, let's just focus on Egypticus for now because even within that one species, there's still a lot of confusion. Now, the original remains, which was the holotype, was actually destroyed in World War II, believe it or not. Yeah, I bet you never thought we'd cross over to History in the Dark on this, but it's true. It was during the night of the 24th and 25th of April 1944, during a British bombing raid. The building that housed the Bavarian State Collection of Paleontology was damaged heavily, and the fossil remains of Spinosaurus were destroyed. Even after that happened, though, drawings as well as detailed descriptions of them remained, so they still remain the holotype, and many paleontologists base their assumptions about the animal off of those remains, as there just aren't that many fossils of Spinosaurus that we currently have. Additionally, the actual layout of the creature and actual appearance has always been, well, questioned quite a bit. Naturally, early on, it was described as a theropod, which it is, but it was given that tripod stance, and its skull was almost always drawn completely wrong giving it a more generic lizard head, rather than the crocodilian-style snout that we know it to have now. I love these old drawings of theropods, because, like, did no one honestly question how this could have worked? Like, to stand, they have to balance on their tail? Really? How were they ever going to chase down any kind of prey? How were they ever going to function? It looked like they're constantly in agony just standing up. It doesn't even make sense when you give it any amount of thought. Nowadays, theropods are known to use their tail for balance, yes, but not sitting on the ground, just held out. To balance out their large skulls and torsos in the front, and their center of gravity would be in their hips. But Spinosaurus didn't even get to that point, at least not immediately, because its sail drew some other confusion from paleontologists. Due to the fragmentary nature of the remains, they were left to make a lot of assumptions about the rest of the body, and as a result, people began drawing it very similar to Dimetrodon, who was a well-known creature, though not a dinosaur, a non-mammalian synapsid that lived during the early Permian, far before Spinosaurus. But they both had sails, and therefore they both must have walked on all fours. People knew Dimetrodon definitely did by that point, 
and that's still correct, but Spinosaurus began being drawn on all fours, which isn't even close to the actual creature, and the head was still often wrong. It was only during the 90s that paleontologists really gave this a hard look, and realized that, you know what, no, that's actually not even remotely what uh, is going on here. During that time into the early 2000s, they finally got to a bit more accurate picture of what the creature was probably like. For one thing, they put it on two legs like a typical theropod, and gave it their alligator-like snout, which differentiates Spinosaurids in general from regular theropods. T-Rex and Giganotosaurus, of course, have a more rounded out snout, but these other dinosaurs with the alligator-like appearance were thought to have been primarily aquatic hunters, like Suchomimus and Baryonyx, and that resulted in the possibility that Spinosaurus was the same way, that they likely got their food mostly from the water, not so much on land, though given the size of Spinosaurus, it probably could have gotten away with eating pretty much whatever it wanted, but due to the shape of the jaws, it would have been better suited for fishing. Naturally, most of you are probably familiar with its portrayal in Jurassic Park 3, though even that wasn't considered fully accurate as the creature was extremely aggressive and willingly took on a Tyrannosaurus Rex, which is a debatable fight in general. Yeah, the Spinosaurus was larger, but T-Rex was very, very bulky, built for one-on-one -on -one combat. The Spinosaurus wasn't quite built that way. It was much leaner, with jaws that weren't thought to be as powerful as a Rex's. But either way, it was a movie, so, you know, whatever. But do you think things were settled then? And everyone went home and said, yes, that is what Spinosaurus looks like. No, of course not. There had to be more, more assumptions made. Over time, things changed, and the Spinosaurus started reverting back to the four-legged posture. And this was due to a study done in 2014 that suggested that the hind limbs of Spinosaurus were much shorter than previously thought. They actually would have been on all fours, all the time, as quadrupeds. This sent waves through dinosaur fan groups, as well as the paleontological community, because, frankly, it just looked wrong. Even in the drawing, it's pretty clear that there's a bit of a weight issue in the middle. Like, that's a long space that has to be supported on these legs. You'd think they'd be closer together. If the dinosaur was actually upright, standing on two, balanced out like a proper theropod, you could see this weight getting distributed properly. But in this methodology, it just looks bizarre, and people just didn't like it. It could be a lot of bias, though, since people had gotten used to the Jurassic Park 3 portrayal, and nobody likes change, especially when it makes their favorite dinosaur look a little sillier. But like I said, even paleontologists started questioning the results of the study. And another study was conducted that showed that the center of mass for the Spinosaurus would be like a typical theropod, in between the hips. Therefore, it is believed that they could easily have stood on two legs, and probably did so whenever they felt like doing that. But because of the length of the legs, it's possible they could have just done both getting down on all fours when needed, perhaps to feed in shallow waters, and standing up on two to walk around. That's easily possible. And nowadays, paleontologists are really leaning into that aquatic idea, giving its tail even a fin-like appearance that could be used to swim through the water. In many ways, the behavior is thought to be that of a big duck, which is hilarious, actually. I am totally down for big duck Spinosaurus, not gonna lie. Every time I see Jurassic Park 3 now, I'm just gonna imagine the Spinosaurus making quacking noises the whole time. It'll be hilarious. <coughs> and to be honest, the overwhelming changes when it comes to Spinosaurus have become kind of a joke over the years, as not many other dinosaurs have gone through this many phases. Yeah, it's true. Old tool depictions of, say, T-Rex are hilariously wrong, but all that was really wrong with those, at least on the whole, was the stance. But then again, you have to remember that Tyrannosaurus in particular has a lot more fossil remains for paleontologists to look at. That's one of Spinosaurus' biggest issues. Any remains that do exist, of which there aren't that many, are rather fragmentary. Therefore, it's a lot more difficult to piece together exactly what this creature looked like. And even though you are talking about rebuilding an animal based purely off of bones, it's likely the current depiction of Spinosaurus is a lot closer to what the actual creature was like, but there's still a lot of mystery about it, namely, that blasted sail. What was it for? Was it for display? Was it for thermoregulation? 
Was it just a size thing that made it look bigger than it actually was? Which it already was pretty big on its own? Maybe it was all those things in one! Who knows? It's hard to really say exactly what it was for. We don't even really know what Dimetrodons was for either. These sails don't come up very often, even in the paleontological record. But it must have had some kind of purpose if the species had it. If you're asking my opinion, I do lean towards thermoregulation, at least in part. And maybe display, at least one of the genders may have had that as a display piece too. Because, if it was aquatic, at night it may have gotten rather cold in the area where they lived. So during the day, the sail could be used to sit up over the water and absorb excess heat, therefore keeping the animal relatively stable at night when it comes to internal body temperature until the sun came back up. It does make some rational sense when you think of it that way, but again, it is just a guess. The point is, no matter which face Spinosaurus seems to wear, namely tomorrow, or even a week from now, who knows anymore, we always love Spinosaurus, the big chungus of the theropod world.